rolling right along on this Thursday night in April. It's the Sound Tigers Coaches Show at the original Vozzies Live on location, the fourth of four shows this regular season. As we continue on, we've got two games left in the regular season. The Sound Tigers facing the Springfield Thunderbirds on Friday, and then on Saturday, the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins. Two games left. The Sound Tigers right now on the outside looking in by the narrowest of margins, only one point behind the Hershey Bears. Providence and Hershey both not locked in, and so the Sound Tigers trying to jump uh, th those two teams in the standings. Right now it's Wilkes-Barre Scranton who has clinched the division, and the Lehigh Valley Phantoms are in second place. They've also clinched a spot, and we're back here live with uh, uh, for head coach uh, Brent Thompson and forward Michael Dow Cole. And uh, here we've been talking with these guys about this playoff push and some few other things as well. We'll get to the fan questions coming up in just a minute. But, uh, guys, first, a little bit of X's and O's. Uh, we've certainly known a lot about the Springfield Thunderbirds. This will be the 12th time you've seen them. But we haven't seen Wilkes-Barre Scranton since, I believe, November. This will be the sixth and final meeting. But all five of the previous meetings took place up uh, through about mid to late November. And so... Uh, I know you've looked at a lot of video, Coach. I know there's a lot of things that you've been keeping an eye on with this team. Uh, let's look at Saturday's game and uh, what can we expect against a, a very good Pitts, uh, Wilkes-Barre Scranton team who has plenty of guys down from Pittsburgh. Well, right now our focus is on Springfield, and our you know my attention has been strictly to, to Springfield. I do have, you know, yeah, we've watched the video. We're prepared. They haven't changed a lot as far as structural stuff. You know they're a team that plays on their toes. They're very, very aggressive. Uh, their attack, they're offensively gifted. They have uh, a number of guys that can score. They filled the void of the, you know, the Gunsels that are up and uh, those kind of players that have got called up. They filled them with uh, Austin Reese, a uh, Northeastern kid that actually played with our Johnny Stevens. Uh, so for me, they're very, very dangerous offensively. They cheat to the offense. Their D are very active. Uh, they're very aggressive. They're physical. They play a hard, hard game. Uh, they have very good special teams. Um, and, and they, they you know, listen, they work, and that's why they're in first place. Uh, they're one of the few teams. Like, if I look at, you know, the number one team and you look at Lehigh Valley, who's very, very skilled and offensively gifted, I, if you rate them, they're both great hockey teams. I'd never take anything away. But if you look at – how hard Wilkes-Barre plays, they really play a hard physical game. They can play any way. Uh, they can play that hard edgy yep. game that we seem to play a lot of. Uh, that we That's kind of our prototype, prototypical game. They play that way. Um, and, and again, I think, uh, uh, you know, Springfield this is going to be a good test. So I don't want to look too far ahead saying yep. that, you know, we watch video, we do all that, we prepare for sure right now and we have all the prep work done it's just right now our focus is on Springfield and my focus is on Springfield and uh, when the game's done you sit on a bus for four hours it's pretty easy to get everything finalized and yeah. have our have our uh, points ready for the next morning's meetings uh, and, and it really it always comes down to how we play and what we do at the end of the day you can prepare you're aware but it's how we play and we want to dictate everything and I think that's really important for our team to continue with that mindset. We've certainly heard your thoughts in the coaches' conversations during pregame shows throughout the year on Springfield because, again, it's it's now going to be a dozen times that the Sound Tigers have faced the Springfield Thunderbirds. That's it? You've all, that's it, right. Really? You've always faced Providence that many times. Mm. It feels like 30 times by now, but only 12. Uh, when you look at Springfield, I know the word that, anyway, that I remember, every time you talk about them, as you say, it's going to be a war. Every game is going to be a war. It's going to be a battle. It's going to be very, very physical. And we're sitting uh, next to one of the guys who plays in those games, Michael Dow Cole. Michael, what, you know, when you go into a game against a team like Springfield or even Providence, a team you play so many times and it's so close and you kind of get that rivalry, uh, what's it like to play in one of those games where you go out, you know you're going to get hit, you know you can bang the bodies around, and uh, all night it's just very, very, very physical? Yeah, I mean, it's... That's why you play hockey. I mean, those yeah. games, uh, it's fast, high-paced games, and you know, those are usually you know, the most fun games to play in. So, um, obviously, we know Springfield. You know, we don't really like each other, and you know, they have an opportunity to uh, you know, knock us out of playoffs. So, we're gonna have to bring our a game. I mean, um, obviously, we know what's on the line. So, they're definitely playing for something, and uh, obviously, it's gonna be a battle. I know you and Ross Johnston play very different styles of hockey, but his eyes light up. He gets very, very excited when he plays a team like Springfield. You know, he loves going out there and doing that. And, and kind of what you talked about right there, it's, is it a lot more fun to go out and play against one of those teams you kind of get up for the game a little bit more? 
I mean, for me personally, um, you know, I usually don't get too high or too low. I mean, I kind of treat every game the same. Um, uh, obviously, you know, for a guy like Ross, uh, I mean, obviously we play different styles, so I don't know what, I don't know what goes on in his mind. But for me, I treat every game, you know, pretty similar. Um, obviously, this weekend uh, with the importance on the line, uh, you know, if you're not up for that game, I think you got some serious issues. So, sure. Right. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. So I'm pretty excited. So it's safe to say you're up for it already. Yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> well, I know, Coach, you're definitely up it's for good it. Here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's, uh, you know, it's probably been the recurring message over the last week and even, you know, three, four weeks heading into this. That's been the message. And, uh, you know, certainly, like he said, there's probably something wrong with you if you don't get up for these games. But uh, can you kind of get that feeling in practice, even that the practice tension's a little bit more elevated this time of year? Oh, it was a good buzz. I The excitement, like I said, I think – the excitement is there. I think the guys feel this time of year. It's just a natural progression as the season comes to an end. Uh, there is that buzz of the playoff feel. I mean, Stanley Cup playoffs are going on TV right now as we speak, and it's just a great time of year to be a sports fan and a hockey fan in general. And I think, uh, you know, it's no different for these guys. It's a cool feeling. The Masters just happened. There's energy. Hey, wanted, everybody wants to get involved. The, this time of the year is great for sports fans. Uh, baseball's going now everything's going like I said the sun's shining and uh, it's a natural feel everybody's got that little extra hop in their step hopefully and uh, it, it has it's been that way so was there more intensity in practice we've been an intense practicing team all year I think the enthusiasm was was upbeat and uh, positive so you know it, it was no different it's business as usual for us because we've been playing playoff hockey for really the last two months fighting for our lives just to be in the top five in not only in our division in in the conference um we've been fighting for our lives every day so tomorrow's game yeah the importance is there we all know it but it's business as usual and that's what i want the guys to focus on is don't squeeze your stick don't be nervous play our game play the way we always can because that's the way we've been playing to be to be in the hunt right now and there's nothing that needs to change so the emphasis they know the importance we talk about the importance but at the end of the day we've been doing it now for god knows how many long how many games for the folks in attendance here at the original vozzies that haven't been out to you know a sound tigers game in general Shame let alone you <laughs> let alone a playoff game i mean there's something to be said about regular season versus playoff you know why should folks come out to webster bank arena especially in a playoff atmosphere just the just for that reason what i said it's exciting it's uh the game is high-paced. I think uh, the elevated level, I don't know if you guys got to see Toronto last year. Uh, those games were outstanding hockey games. It was Michael's first taste of the American Hockey League. Pace, strength, uh, physicality, uh, execution, you know. you got to tip your hat to the Toronto. They, they beat us. They were probably a little more skilled than us. I thought we outworked them. I thought we outbattled them. But I think at the end of the day, they out, obviously outscored us, and they had a little bit more... Uh, you know, pure skill as far as a group. Uh, you know, looking at this year, I think we're a better team. I think we're a better group, and I think we can make a big splash if we get in. Uh, so uh, it, to come out to our these games, you're going to see some great hockey. I think mean, I don't think you've been disappointed the year that uh, that we won the division. I know that some of you guys have remembered uh, six years ago we won the division, the banner there. Uh, it was my first year here. We finished with 91 points and, you know, lost to Hartford in the playoffs, and Right now we're at 92 points, and I think the hockey le the level is is comparable, if not better. I think this has been an exciting year for everybody, and I, I hopefully it can continue. So uh, it's going to be just great high-paced hockey and exciting. Yeah, and it was great to see the fans pack Webster Bank Arena for the final, you know, several games of the regular season. And now uh, hopefully we'll, you know, get in, and then the Sound Tigers fans can come out fill Webster Bank Arena for some playoff games that, uh, you know, hopefully, fingers crossed, will be coming up here in mid-April. Hey, speaking about uh, fans and you guys, we'll certainly get to the fan questions that have been streaming in throughout the day and the last couple of days, and the ones we already got tonight here at the original Vazis. Uh, a couple of them, they're, they're for each of you. Michael, I'll start with you there on the far side. One of the questions was, you know, you put up uh, some good points against Springfield this year. Now, of course, it doesn't help that you play them 11 times, but you specifically have uh, gotten, and I'm not sure I don't have the exact number in front of me, but you've gotten almost, you know, as many or more than anybody else in the team against Springfield specifically. And the question is, you know, do players have a certain knack for playing against other teams or in certain buildings, or is that just the way it happens? Um, for me, I'd say more so the building. Um, 
I know come in, in junior, there's obviously arenas that I preferred to play in. I was more comfortable in those arenas. Um, you know, li like I said, for me personally, I treat every game the same. Um, you know, sometimes it just happens that way that, you know, you, you score more against certain teams and sometimes you, know, you don't score as much against others. Um, sometimes I think that's, that just happens to every player. But, um, you know, for me, obviously, there's certain buildings that I that I enjoy playing in. Um, you know, I enjoy playing in the I Valley. I do enjoy playing in our rink, too. So um, for me, it's more the buildings. There are certain buildings, you know, like you said, that, uh, you know, have different, you know, not layouts, but as far as, uh, you know, lengths go uh, certain neutral zones are smaller than others a lot of the north division teams have those condensed rinks do you like to play in, in a bigger rink uh, kind of you know an nhl style if you will where it's wide open or some of these you know uh, say north division rinks where it's condensed things happen a lot quicker um i uh, for me personally it's just the nicer buildings um you know a rink like hershey you know yeah. and uh, lehigh valley i really like i really like the design of that rink um Obviously, Springfield's not, uh, you know, not a, a very nice rink. So um, <laughs> I <don't know>. I'm, <laughs> just, I'm just going to be honest. Just throwing it's not, it out there. It's yeah. not <laughs> a very nice rink. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. So um, I just prefer, you know, playing a, you know, a nicer rink. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Tom, I know you, you know, you got a, a playing career. Do you see truth in that? Or is, uh, you know, building, yeah. buildings make a difference? Well, you have teams that you just naturally play good against. It's just, it's, it's just how you feel that night knowing you came in and it, you know i remember you know I, I was fortunate to be relatively in a small nhl career relatively successful against pittsburgh and if you look at my stats for the nhl i didn't get very many points but if we played pittsburgh somehow i snuck points in everywhere and i actually scored my nhl goal against pittsburgh so it was uh, it, it was just that way and in the minors it was the same thing you always had a team or a group of teams that you just you had that feel, and you knew there was, you were going to do good that night. Uh, it naturally, you know, carried in. It, it was true. It was a confidence thing too. So, and I'm opposite of Mike. I like, uh, I like the small, ugly <laughs> rinks, tiny, <laughs> tiny corners. Anywhere I can get my hands on someone, I want to be in those small areas. <laughs> so I like. I played in Springfield. I liked the small rink. It was small corners. It was hard to play in. Binghamton, another hard rink. The old Hershey Park Arena, for those of you that remember the old Hershey Park Arena, was probably my favorite rink of all time, just outside Chicago Stadium and the NHL stuff. But I'm talking minor league stuff. Hershey Park Arena, the old one, was awesome. And not to discount, Lehigh Valley's off the charts. It's one of the most beautiful rinks. One, they do a great job there. Uh, it's fun to be in there. The atmosphere is awesome there. Um, you know, it's – and our rink, to be honest, Bridgeport's got – awesome rink the the ice typically this year has been good we put new boards in the sight lines are fantastic for fans uh it, it's a good clean bright rink to play in so it is a good rink to play into i remember when i played here i hated coming into bridgeport because we always lost so that was one of my <laughs> one of my pet peeves or one of my beefs but uh you know it's been obviously good for us on this side of things Another fan question that's rolled in, and uh, Tom, I know you were saying you know pretty positive things about uh, DC earlier in the show. I'm going to kind of flip it now, Michael. What has this guy meant to you here? Uh, meant to you personally as you go through careful your first power play be, time be careful. Yeah, this is probably the <laughs> this is the question that's going to put you on the spot the most. So hey, but the fans want to know, so I've got to ask it. What has this guy meant to you? You should here? have asked when I wasn't here. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't oh, up I here mean, yet. I was up here by myself. But you know he's. You know, as you're uh, in your first professional season, he's your head coach. So, uh, you know, what have you learned here throughout the year? Yeah, I mean, coming in as a 20-year-old kid, um, first professional year, I mean, for me it was just working on, you know, different aspects of my game. Like I said, I, I, I wanted to get better defensively. You know, obviously working on, you know, my pace is a big thing that, that they talk about. So continuing to get faster and, um, you know, he's definitely pushed me in all aspects. So, um, you know, all the, the entire coaching staff. So I think my game has definitely made it you know, a lot of positive strides, and, and it's heading in the right direction. So, um, like I said, the, the coaching staff here and the group of guys has been really, you know, unbelievable, and it's been definitely a great year, uh, you know, for me development-wise. And if you guys want to know how he did and how head coach Brent Thompson thinks about that answer, like he said, just watch the power play and the amount of time is going <laughs> to dictate that. No, obviously kidding. Uh, 
No, our guys work very, very hard. We got a lot of behind the scenes guys that people don't see. And, you know, even Vazzy, you know, Vazzy's restaurant here, but uh, John Vazano does a lot with our video. He has their shifts put up every day. He works extremely hard on the video side of things. Matt Karkner does a lot of uh, statistical things, watches video with the guys individually. He spent a lot of time with Josh and Mike. Uh, you know, Bogey obviously has, is kind of a special guy as far as his offensive gifts and his vision. Uh, great, great fountain of knowledge for these young goal scorers. Uh, so as a collective group, I couldn't be happier with our staff, and I couldn't be happier because I think our guys are going to get the most out of, and they're going to develop through the course of the year if you take pieces from each one of us that they go. And I think, Mike, like I said at the beginning of the show, Michael was is coachable. He wants to be better, and his goal is to play in the National Hockey League, and I think, uh, you know, it's kind of a bright future. It's going to happen. It's just when. When's it going to happen? So. Coach, final question here. This one's solely for you uh, because you've been, obviously, head coach and you've been an assistant as well uh, with the Peoria Rivermen uh, for a few years. But uh, when you look at your style of coaching, you know, obviously a head coach is different than an assistant coach for obvious reasons. But your style of coaching, is it, you know, has it always been the same for you or has it been different being an assistant versus a head coach? Well, the biggest way to, to or the best way to describe the difference is uh, – as an assistant, you can always you're always giving advice, you're always suggesting ideas. As the head coach, you're making the decision. There's everything falls on you. End of story. It's easy to sit and say, hey, you know what? I'd do this. Maybe we should do this. Maybe we should do that. But at the end of the day, sitting there at night, the next day, you got to make that decision. So that was the biggest thing as far as personality. And I am what I am. And just like Michael's what he is as far as his personality, uh, Bogey's the way he is, Matt's the way he is. I think if you're if you're if you fake it and you try to be something that you're not, uh, I don't think you're going to be a good good coach. And as an assistant coach, it's you know you're interacting. I was I'm a guy that likes to talk. I interacted a lot with our players when I was an assistant. I don't interact as much. You still talk. I though. still talk a lot, uh, as Michael knows. <laughs> I still talk a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I I joke around with the guys, but at the end of the day, when it's time to work. You know, when it's we all know when it's time to work, and I, I feel like uh, I'm a very intense, and that's the way I played. I had fun in this game. I love this game more than anything in the world, and I think, uh, uh, you know, I, it's awesome. I guess it's just great to be involved in it, and when you play, you know, you can see that passion on the ice and how hard, like I think I was a pretty hard-nosed, hard-working person, and I think I translated that into my coaching as far as hard-working, passionate person that cares about the team and cares about, about the game and uh, and about our, uh, everyone in that room and i it hasn't changed as far as from assistant to to head the only changes are that i actually making the decisions and i'm i'm the one that uh you know a lot of those you know big tough decisions fall on and and uh, you know so for me that's the big difference but at the end of the day uh learned a lot from some great coaches that i worked with through the course of time from my first years in Peoria and St. Louis organization all the way to, you know, with Cappy and Doug and, um, you know, Greg Cronin, who's up there right now. And there's just a group of great coaches that you can learn from. And then the guys that I'm here with right now. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty you, fortunate. Hey, thanks guys for, for coming out, hanging out with us. I appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun. Not only, you know, this show, but all year, Tomer. Thank you. Thank you. It's been great. Thanks guys. Guys, thanks so much for coming out. Uh, enjoy here the season finale, the regular season finale on Friday and Saturday. And uh, keep an eye out on those standings. The Sound Tigers will look to make their way in. And uh, very, very close. One of the closest races we've seen in a long, long time. The Sound Tigers, Hershey Bears, Providence Bruins all battling for those final two playoff spots. Again, thank you so much for coming out. Hope you guys had fun. We'll talk to you next season here at the Original Vozzies. <laughs>